Hey everybody, welcome. In this episode, we're going to talk about functions inside of Bash. Functions are pretty cool because basically it allows you to create a section of code that you can invoke by name and you can invoke it multiple times. So it helps keep your code nice and organized. So if there's ever a time in code when you want to do things multiple times, well, there's a few ways you can do it. You can work with loops, which we talked about briefly in the previous episode. Uh, you can make functions, which make your life a little bit easier. Or if you don't do any of these fancy new things we're talking about, you can just take a section of code and copy and paste that numerous times. And then just change things a little bit each time if you have some variation. Which, you know, when I first started coding and I did like my first project, like literally I'm dumb as a doorknob. I didn't know how to do anything. So that's exactly what I did. I just took this giant section of code and just pasted it over and over again. So the program, which did literally nothing, was like a thousand lines of code. Then I just changed like one thing each time. After I was a pro, I revisited this software. I don't remember exactly what I was doing, but like modifying some buttons or something. And I just created a function, modify button, and I invoked that a few times with some variations. And I changed my thousand lines of code down to like 50. So right now we're gonna talk about some functions and then afterwards we'll probably come back to loops. Or should I say we'll loop back around to it. Anyways, we're gonna go over some more advanced looping techniques in future episodes. So let's get to functions right now. So from the previous video, we had this code here. It's pretty simple. All it does is it loops three times, asks for a student name and a test score, creates a file with that student's name, and puts the score inside of it. Now, obviously, repeating this section of code is pretty simple here. However, if it gets more complex and you have multiple lines of code or any nested conditionals, it can get a little bit messy. So what we could do is we could break out the core functionality of this loop or the section of code and put it in its own function. Then what we could do is just invoke that function. So here's how we create a function. We'll just call it grade. And then you put parentheses and then curly braces. So this is the syntax to create the function. We could take some lines of code cut it, paste it here, and then where this code used to be, we just say the name of that function, grade. And this is going to work exactly the same way. Before we explain it too much, let's just run it and make sure everything's good, and we'll just test it out. Tim, Tony, and uh, Tara. All right, cool. Let's see if those showed up. So we'll say ls test one and you can see those files now show up in this list. Okay, so our code works. So pretty much what happens is in the code, it, this line at three, this doesn't actually happen right now. It doesn't happen until we invoke or call that function, which happens on line 11. So this is just defining the function of what will happen, and then anytime we invoke that function by saying its name, it'll then jump up, execute line four, five, and six. This is handy because anytime we want to do these three things, we can just do it. So we can say it down here as well. Now you might be familiar from other languages with having parentheses here. Although that's gotten me, you don't use parentheses, you just use the name of the function to invoke it. Now that's the basics of functions. We're gonna get into more details like taking arguments and return values, all that stuff. But just one thing I wanted to call out in this video, which will prep for the solution in the next video, it has to do with variables. So you can see we are reading into this variable called name and into this variable score. Well, that's going to replace any value that is given to these variables in the calling code. So down here, if we have that variable, it's going to mess it up. So let's go through an example. Let's say we have name and we give it the value Caleb. And then let's just go ahead and echo name. So at the start of this application, we should immediately get the value Caleb out. Oh, well, afterwards, I'm going to do the same thing, echo name, paste it down here. So let me just go through this real quick and I will show you that the value of name is actually changed by this function. So I'm just going to go through and put some values in here. Nothing too crazy. Uh, there we go. And at the end, the final value for name is salamander. And that comes from that third execution where we set name. So this is dangerous because pretty much we could have a function which should kind of be like this self-isolated like entity that doesn't really affect the rest of the application. It just does something, you give it some values, it gives you back some values. 
Well, now we have a function that can have consequences. Things happen outside of the function. So this is a dangerous thing, and I'm going to talk about in the next video a little bit more about how variables work and how to fix this inside of Bash. And this is having to do with the local keyword. So stay tuned. It should be pretty fun. Well, I don't know if fun is the right word, but educational at least. So stay tuned. I'm going to have fun. Hope you do too. Okay.